I have another knife I want to share with you today. This is the Drangur from Work Tough Gear. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this knife, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank Vic at Work Tough Gear for sending me the Drangur so that I could share it with you. Now, the other thing is, um, we've talked about this before, but I think I'll go over briefly again before we get started looking at the knife. And that is the company, Work Tough Gear. I just want to point out once again that although these knives are made in Taiwan, they're anything but cheap. The, the company Work Tough Gear, owned by Vic Lin, is a family-owned and family-run company, and it is what is known as mid-tech. So there is a combination of high technology in the cutting and the heat treating of these blades, but the assemble and final finish of each one is done by hand, so that you can refer to them as semi-custom. And to, to that point, Vic only runs these in small numbers at any given time. There's a large catalog of designs, but he'll run each design through in a production run in relatively small numbers. I'm going to come back to that in a moment because it is important. So one of the other things about the knives that come out of Work Tough Gear is they're not Vic's designs. Vic does have final say for the most part on the design, but the designs are submitted to him for his consideration by knife designers from around the world. For instance, this knife, the Drenger, was uh, designed by John Nelson Griffith, and John uh, licensed his design to Vic to produce, and that's the way it is done there. So once again, they are a high quality knife for sure. Now, the other thing I want to point out about it is that and I didn't really appreciate this with all the different designs, why there was so much interest in Work Tough Gear. And uh, actually, there should actually be more interest on people's parts. Until I went to the Work Tough Gear uh, Facebook page. There is a fan group of uh, people uh, there that, uh, well, if you want to know about the culture of Work Tough Gear, you have to go to their Facebook page to truly appreciate it. These people love these knives without question, and they're so highly sought after that when a new production run is completed and Vic is ready to drop it for sale through his website, they sell out in minutes in minutes you have to know ahead of time when they're going to be ready and what exactly what time they're they drop so to speak or they become available and get ready on the key button to hit enter so that you can purchase one of these knives now some of them are sold by uh, dlt trading and i believe um well, there's a few other companies. I'll put a few links in the, the video description, but for the most part, if you want to get one of these knives, you do have to go through that process of staying up late, depending on your time zone, so that you can get one just be, as they go for sale. All right, so that's what I wanted to say about the company Work Tough Gear now and the knife designs. We're going to talk more about the Drenger in just a few moments time, so let's get started on that. I'm going to bring the camera down so I can give you some close-ups of the knife itself. I'll give you the specifications. I'll talk about its designs. And then I'll do a few demonstrations and I'll talk about my experience with it. All right, just before we take a closer look at the knife itself, let's just take a quick look at the sheath. So once again, like all the sheaths that Vic produces for the knives, they're all made of Kydex and they're all high quality. Very simple, not a lot of uh, extras added to them, just a high quality sheath that does a really good job of holding, retaining the knife. And this one is no exception at all. I'd like to point out some of the details. You can see where the molding actually picks up things like, well, right there, the thumb ramp on it. And I've seen another knife. Well, actually, here it is. Yeah, it actually picks up a little divot right up there for where the screw is. So yeah, really nice knife. And of course, they do come with small drain holes. Now, I don't have any mounting hardware we're on this. I am going to be sending it to my leathersmith friend Al Halliday at uh, Highland Horde Leatherworks and he's going to put some leather to this so I can turn it into a two-way carry mount. I do want it to be able to use a drop dangler from my belt but I'm also going to have it set up so I can have two straps and have it hang below my belt horizontally like that and that's that's very classic to this design of knife which I'll talk about in a moment so all right let's get the sheath out of the way oh yeah thumb push off 
perfectly done, of course, and very comfortable to use. So here's the knife. So let me go through a few specifications and then we'll get on to the design. So the overall length of this knife from tip, very pointy tip, to pommel is 14.1 inches or 358 millimeters. The blade length is 8.8 .8 inches or 208 millimeters. The thickness, this is a thick piece of steel, 0.23 of an inch, so just under a quarter inch thick, which is 5.8 millimeters. The knife by itself comes in at 18 ounces, yes, just over a pound, 510 grams. But if you add the sheath in, it comes in at 22.5 ounces or 638 grams. The knife, this one specifically, is made of S a Japanese SK85 SK high carbon steel hardened to 50, between 56 and 58 on the Rockwell scale and has a double temper. Now I say this knife specifically because one of the things I've learned about the Vic, the knives that Vic produces is usually the first production runs are done in SK85 to see what the uptake is or what the interest in in the knives and then he may change it to a number of others. Now a big knife like this will probably stay a carbon steel but the small ones often go to stainless steel but there are a few choices of carbon steel that Vic has that he will produce knives in. So yeah, I just wanted to point that out. So if you don't like SK85, and there's actually no reason not to, it's a perfect choice for this type of knife, a future production run may come out in a different steel again. All right, so let's talk to the design. So once again, the designer is John Nelson Griffith, and John is a, a lifelong outdoors person and martial artist, both of which he drew on for the design of this knife. But it's based on a very classic Norse knife known as the Sax, spelled S-E-A-X, Sax. And I have I have quite a, an affection for Saxes. I have a few. This one specifically is called, uh, this design, is a broke back Sax. Now, what is a Sax? Well, the Sax knife in Norse use was an all-rounder. It was a bit of everything. Primarily, it was a belt knife that you carried around to do everything from, well, could be fire prep or shelter building or meat prep or food prep, as as to say, but it could double as a defensive weapon. They, this may look like a weapon, and it does have some influence from John's martial arts background there, but they are first and foremost a do-all weapon. They didn't have guards on them. In fact, this has more of a guard than most traditional broke-back saxes have because they weren't made for stabbing. They were made for chopping and slicing. So this really is pretty true to that, but has a real modern take on it. So that's the first thing I want to say about the design, and we'll talk more about it in a minute. As I mentioned, it is a very thick, almost quarter inch thick piece of steel, but it is full flat grind from the spine to the edge. It is one continuous angle. May be a little difficult to pick that up because of the full length fullers on both sides. Those cutouts right there, those fullers do reduce a little bit of weight without sacrificing any bit of strength. And they add a nice uh, architectural touch to them or aesthetic touch to them, if you will. Does come to a very fine point as well, doesn't it? Now, it's a completely flat blade. There is no curvature to the blade at all. But overall, this is a do-all knife, and of course, you, you knife this big, 8.8 .8 inches, you want to be able to chop with it. So this is designed for chopping. It doesn't look like a dedicated chopper, and you know, there are better knives for chopping. I'll, I'll admit that. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. But one of the things is that where a dedicated chopper would have a handle or a grip that would come down at an angle, rather than do that, this knife, the grip is in line with the spine, but the blade slides downwards. In other words, the blade is lower here than it is here. Obviously, it's getting thicker as it goes down, and that gives it not only a weight forward tendency, but also takes it into a bit of an angle for chopping. So when you are chopping, the end of the blade does come in contact first, and the ang uh, your hand remains in a good ergonomic position. Speaking of ergonomics, look at the grip, right? Look at that G10 grip. Nice color, nice scales. It's got that uh, snakeskin checkering on it, which adds up very nicely. Perfectly contoured all around. And if you're wondering, yes, it does fit my XL to double XL hands, but I expect it'll fit a whole lot of hands just simply because of the design. So nicely contoured all the way around with enough real estate that I can move a little bit up and down on it. And we'll talk more about that in a minute, how I would grip this knife for use. Now, two more things I want to point out. One is the back of the spine right here is chamfered. 
on each corner right here, as is the choil chamfered here, and that's obviously for comfort's sake, whereas the rest of the spine remains incredibly sharp, like <laughs> almost offensively sharp. That'll scrape, as we'll see in a moment. Now, why would he do that? Why would he take the edges off there and there? And that's obviously because the intention of the choil is for you to grab the knife with a finger, one finger ahead of the guard and work your way up. I will be perfectly honest, I'm not a big fan of choils, but it does work on this knife, although first criticism I'll say, it's not really a criticism, it's just a personal preference. This choil is a little bit smaller. I would like it to be, if you're gonna have a choil, make it big enough for your hand. Maybe it's the size of my hands, but what I find is that when I get my hand in here, well, maybe you can see the tip of the blade, the very edge of the blade is in contact with my finger. Now, for the most part, that's not an issue. And if I'm wearing gloves, then it's, you know, it's not going to cut me, but it came close today. There's a little tiny nick right there. So the choil is just a little bit small, but what using the choil does for this knife is change. Well, one, it brings the edge as far back as you can possibly get it. So you can get some really close work on a piece of wood, such as feathering, which I'll demonstrate in a few minutes time, but it also changes the balance point. So now I have moved up on the knife and I'm pretty much in neutral balance. Well, can you see where my thumb is? pretty much in neutral balance right there. Makes it lighter, faster for doing small tasks and like, well, not chopping, not big chopping. We'll talk again about that in a moment. Still, I just assumed that troll wasn't there. I just assumed the recastle came all the way back to the edge of the blade and then I could use it like this. And then I'd have the, the uh, guard and the back of the handle to be more comfortable in my hand. All right, speaking of which, let's just talk about chopping. It is a chopping knife, but it is not a master of chopping. There are better chopping knives, but this is what happens when you design a knife like this. You have to create some balances. That full uh, flat grind of this does mean it'll bite in deep, but you are taking some of the weight away from the knife as well when you create it. So as you'll see when I chop, this will bite in incredibly deep, so deep that it will stick if you don't use the, a good technique. And even if you do, sometimes it'll still stick. But because of that weight forward, it does have good chopping ability. So you can get up close, chop a little bit like this. You can get back, chop a little bit like this. Or if you do what I've done here, which is, as you know, I've always put a piece of paracord on, I'll slide my finger in here. Can you see how I've got my finger through that loop? And now look how far back I can get on the knife with full control and no risk of losing it and the extra length I get for chopping. Now, not heavy duty. This is more for snap chops, if you will. The little ones that take branches off. And uh, yeah, so that's a good way of using it. Now, I could have put on a full size lanyard that could come up over the back of my hand. Maybe that's another thing to show right there is the hidden uh, lanyard hole, nice to get it out of the way. Even the pommel, look at that with the bird's beak. It's flared back here, so it doesn't slide. <laughs> it's really nice. One more feature to show you before we get on to the testing is the fact that there are thumb scallops on either side. Now, for me, thumb scallops aid in doing this, holding the hand in reverse grip so that I can do chest lever, cut, chest lever cuts. I can with this knife, as I'll demonstrate, but it is not really comfortable. As you can see, the bird's beak of the pommel does dig into my hand. Still, I can. I can even move up a little bit on it. It's just, uh, it's not as comfortable as I would like it to be. But what that will do mean is I can use it for pinch cuts. So now I can get right up here, hold the knife, fingers just ahead of the guard, but not down in the choil. And I can use that as a pinch cut for chopping, say, on a cutting board. Okay, now, one more thing. I haven't even mentioned, why is it called a dringer? What is a dringer? So a dringer is an old Norse word for a warrior or one who is bold. It is actually intended as a compliment. So the best of the warriors, if they really stood out in battles, were referred to as dringer. That's my understanding of the origins of the term. And it really does apply to this knife. It makes the implication that this is a fighting knife and yeah, it could be, right? I, I, if I needed a knife and a defensive purpose, this knife would certainly do that or fill that task, but its primary role is an all round knife out here in the woods. And that's, it does excel. Has a few shortcomings I'll get to, but by and large, it excels at that. All right, 
Now, let's get to doing some demonstrations. Task number one, batoning. Now, I will do a little bit of chopping with this knife, but uh, it's not the type of chopping where you take trees down or cut big logs in half. I'll do some, do some chopping with it, because there is a few comments I want to make on that, but let's just start by batoning. So, the piece of wood I have, I just cut, is maple. It is dead, it is dry. Yet to, it remains to be seen just how dry it is on the inside if I can feather it, but it's wet on the outside and that's because of the rain we've uh, had here. So what have I got? Uh, inch and a half, just under two inches and about 10 inches long. Let's split that down. Should have no issue. Look at that. Look how big a span there is on that. I think I'll stand up for this one. Okay, yeah, that did a good job. All right, so I will be splitting the rest of these down. I just want to show you a nice piece of maple. There is a knot up here, but no, no problem at all. So here was my experience splitting with it, and it was true to all the other times I've split. I've split much bigger wood than this, and here's what I have found. That full flat ground grind, when you hit it the first time, goes in deep. When you hit it the second time, it slows down because the sides of it are grabbing on the wood or the wood are grabbing the sides of the blade. However, once it gets down to the spine, that quarter inch does the magic. Let's do one more. That quarter inch does the magic and it just pops the wood apart just like that. So it works great in uh, doing splitting. There are better knives. High saber grind will do better than a full flat grind, but this does that well. The other type of chopping I'll get to in a moment, this is where that, that full flat grind kicks in. All right, so the next task I'm gonna do is be putting a notch on one of these pieces of wood as if I'm going to be creating a tent peg. All right, so a real good test of this knife would be if I took it and I chopped down a nice big piece of oak like this. I'm not going to do that. I'm not even going to cross baton a big piece of wood. Trust me, it will do it. It's just, it, it, it's a little excessive for what I need to demonstrate. What I'm going to do at this point is just do a little bit of cross cutting where I'm going to create the notch for my tent peg. Yeah. One more. There we go. All right, so that went in about a third of the way, maybe just a tiny bit more, and I will cut down my L7 with my hand. You can see I'm using it up here in the choil. Yeah, it does that nicely. Very slicey. Okay, how much more do you need to see? I could do a lot more chopping with this, but that's enough to show you that you can use it for the fine, that is so smooth. That is nice. Uh, you can use it for the finer tasks like notching, which you can use not only for tent pegs, but obviously for any traps that you want to create. So let's put a point on this thing. All right, normally when I use this demonstration, I do it so that I can demonstrate what the knife is like in the reverse grip and using the chest lever cut. And I already said that this is not my favorite for doing that. It just seems, doesn't seem to fit my hand well. It may fit your hand well for this, but not so much mine. But when you've got a knife like this, why not just chop a point on? So that's what I'll do. And I don't have to be very far back on the knife for this to work. Kind of went in a little bit deeper than I wanted to that time. All right, so maybe I can just get up a little closer. Make a little finer point with it. Right now I'm playing more than anything else because the point is already there at least enough for a tent peg, right? All right, so here's, uh, let me just cast that off. Here's what I want to say about chopping with this knife. I think I would use this for maybe spoon carving, like a small hatchet. It has enough forward weight and enough balance in my hand right here that I could do a lot of the work for cleaning the, at least the initial pieces of wood off if I was doing some uh, spoon carving with it because I like the balance. Look at the fine work I can do with that. You see how it digs in like crazy? Okay, however, there is a downside to the design of this knife I want to point out, and I didn't discover this out here in the woods. This is something I discovered at home, because one of the things I like to do with knives before I take them to the woods is see just how versatile they are, especially around the house. And I wondered about this because a true sax is a good knife to use for food prep. Although I always question that because 
of the flat edge. There is no rounded edge. Uh, the other thing is, is a most kitchen knives, the blade will be below the guard so that your knuckles don't hit the counter. So I wondered if this would make for a good kitchen knife. It does not. It not really, um, unless your hand is off the edge of the counter. But if you're on a cutting board, here's what you get. See, my, my finger or my knuckles are on the board here. The knife, I would have to really go forward. So if I went forward so that I would get contact with the cutting board, you can see it's not going to get a full length cut. But if you can get back and you get your hand off of the cutting board, then you're really going to get a full cut across your piece of meat. It won't allow you to rock very well because of that flat edge, but it'll work. So it does have the limitations for food prep. At the, on the other side of that though, of course, is this full flat grind. will slice through things very quickly, uh, even with that quarter inch, because of its broad from edge to spine, that it comes down quite thin. I guess what I'm saying here is it's not my favorite knife for chopping, at least in the kitchen. Out here, it works pretty good. All right, so that's that demonstration. I guess the next one I want to do is a little bit of feather sticking. And I took one of those quarters and split it down into eighths. I'm looking for my best piece. This one has a bit of a wave in it, but no knots. This one has a knot, but is straighter. I think I'll work with the one with the knot and I'll just work from here down. So this is the inside edge. You can actually see a little bit of the hardwood. Uh, yeah, this is maple, red maple is what it is. So um, dry, let's just see how well it does. I wanna make sure, let's put the camera down a little bit. So I'm again, working, holding the knife up in the choil. So I get good balance this way, and I do get close to the edge. Let's just see what it will do for curls. So this is that, now, here's what I'm doing, of course, laying the knife completely flat, and then raising the edge until I get a bite. And as I work my way down that original apex, that original ridge, if you will. I'm rotating the knife side to side, picking up the ridges I create with each previous cut. Well, okay. It's doing all right. I am finding that I am holding on quite tight, and I'm not sure why, because I have good balance. I actually, I have an idea why I'm doing that. Let's just uh, work through a few more curls and then we'll talk about it. Yeah, I think I have an idea what's going on here. Let's see if I can get a really fine curls. The little ones that you catch with your ferrocerium rod. Yeah, not quite as easy. All right, so there's what I got. I have some curls on it, so it does feather. It will create the curls, but it was a bit of work, honestly. It was a bit of work creating these curls, and the reason is, is because of the thickness. At a quarter inch thick on the spine, yes, very thin up here, but still, when I raise the knife from that flat to just enough to bite, I'm finding I'm raising it more than I would with other knives in order to get that bite. Now, there is another factor that plays into this, and this is true of pretty much all, well, actually all of the work tough knife, uh, work tough gear knives, and that is the secondary edge. Now, it's not gonna show up quite as shiny as when I got it, because you can see it, it's been, been seeing quite a bit of use in testing, is the secondary edge. This is one of the hallmarks and one of the things that is true of all of the knives that come out of work tough gear is that they are polished with a micro bevel and it is a uh, convex. So it's a polished convex micro bevel. It's, it looks nice. It's a nice touch, a nice finishing touch. It does help keep the edge longer. It just makes it a little bit more challenging sometimes trying to find the edge when you're doing feathering like that. It's working, but I just find it a little bit more challenging. I guess what I'm saying is this knife will feather and there's other ways of feather and I could have stuck this into my chopping block and just pulled the knife back and forth. Uh, that is legitimate. I'll do that in a future video. 
but I wanted to show some traditional style of feathering with this. Two things here. One is that angle grind. It's not the final, well, yes, both the final grind as well as the primary grind, but also the fact that I have to hold it right where the knife is at its thinnest. It's not uncomfortable to hold. It's just, it got small. Maybe that's the best way to say it. it got small, so I have to hold tighter to maintain my grip on it. And yes, my finger is coming in contact with the sharpened point right there. And uh, once again, let's see, I want you to make sure you can get it. So you can see it is feathering. But I've got a lot of knives that'll do a better job of feathering than that. All right, last demonstration, we'll be scraping. I'll show you three types of scraping. I have a small piece of birch bark on the ground right here to catch my scrapings with. And the uh, first one I'm going to use is the back of the blade on one of those splits of maple, just to see if I can create some fuzz. And, oh yeah. Lots of fuzz on the bottom of that stick. Let's just lay that down here. Actually, we'll lay it aside for a second. Let's add a little fat wood to the pile. That looks as good as any right there. Pile this all up. I don't need a whole lot for the demonstration. Keep my wood shavings handy. Now let's get the ferrocerium rod out. So I just want to point this out. I am going to use the back of the spine of the knife in a forward scrape, but normally when, when I get into a big knife like this, I like to pin it to a piece of wood and then pull the, the well, let's just do one demonstration like that. Pull the, the ferrocerium rod across the back. But that's not how I'm going to do it today, only because of what I have here to work with or where I'm working. I'm just going to do it the traditional way. And the reason I do that, of course, is with a big knife like this, it's very easy just to smack the ground with the knife. So, uh, yeah, that's all it took to light the fat wood and the scrapings. And we're good to go. We have the startings of a fire. All right, let's wrap this video up. All right, a few closing comments for the Drenger from Work Tough Gear. So, you know, one of the first comments I'm going to make is, this is a cool looking knife, right? There's no question about it. It is a cool looking knife, but looking cool is not everything. You want your knife to perform as well. And it does perform. It does, it's, it's kind of, I don't want to call it a compromise because it's not. It's a do-all knife. It doesn't excel in all the areas you might want a knife to, but it does everything very well. So number one, chopping. Yes, it does chop. It has enough length. It has enough uh, weight in the forward area. It has definitely got the thin grind that this will chop into wood quite deep, quite easily, without being overly heavy. And that's something that's often lost on people when they get a big chopping knife is, okay, it's a big chopping knife, and yes, it will penetrate wood, but how many swings are you gonna be able to use that knife for before you start to tie a road? Well, this is being a lighter knife, you can get a, a lot more work done with it before you tie your, your, your uh, hand and arm out. And as mentioned, I like using that little lanyard loop on the end just to get back, but this is not for heavyweight chopping. This is for the fast snap chops is what I refer to them as. You could, as I mentioned before, put a full lanyard on so that it wraps over the back of your hand and you would have, you know, very little concern about the knife slipping out of your hand. I don't anyway. You know, some knives, when you're chopping with them, the weight of the knife wants to pull the, the knife forward through that, that centrifugal force of your arm swinging it. And then it's up to the hook or the, the bird's beak or whatever, the pommel to hold. This is not overly pronounced, it's not overly aggressive, but it's got a, a hook there, not a hook so much, but it comes, it flares out. That's the best way to say it. Flares out all over the place. So like an ax pommel or the knob on, on an ax, it does its job without being uncomfortable. So yeah, the hand, man, the ergonomics on this thing are just outstanding. They really are. So those are the things I like most about the knife. What are some of the things I don't like so much? The choil is too small. Actually, in personal preference, I just assumed there was no choil whatsoever. Uh, the, the thumb scallops work really well for pinching up here and getting up here on the choil, but they don't work so well with the grip for reverse cut. Now, on your, my, honest, um, 
I don't use the knife like this all the time. Actually, it's not entirely true. I use it a fair amount like this, but not so much that it's going to really be a problem for my hand. It's just something I wouldn't want to work with on a regular basis. I have knives that are much more comfortable to work in that reverse grip than this one is. In the short term, it's fine. It's in use under the lot where I'd start to find it really uncomfortable. And same thing with that choil. In the short term, I can use that. It's over the time it starts to get uncomfortable. If I did like half a dozen feather sticks, oh yeah, that, that would really start to bother me right here. Still, the balance, that's what that does is creates that balance, is right there so it does make a difference in holding the knife as you move forward like that. A couple things I haven't talked about. One is tip strength. Um, I have a few times dug this into logs and given it twist sideways. It has not damaged it in any way, but I'm leery of doing that to be quite honest, because let's just look at this full flat grind. You can see the tip. I'm just a little leery of doing a lot of digging and prying with this knife. But then again, I don't do that much regardless of, with any knife for that matter, because that's not what knives are designed for. If this were ever to break on me, uh, I think what I would do is have it rounded up ever so slightly. So just reprofile to uh, get the point back, but get a little tiny bit of belly in the forward part of the knife. Okay, that's just personal preferences on this knife. I think most people will be perfectly happy with this knife for all the tasks. If you go to that Facebook page, there's a gentleman there that uses this on his farm for all his farm work. So he's gone, done a lot of different tasks with this knife very successfully. And uh, you know, his experience does count for a lot as well in my mind. Okay, that's all I have to say about the knife. All the specifications and the links to where you can purchase this knife will be in the video description. If you have any comments or questions, please put them in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.